so let's discuss evolution of big data technologies so what is happening here there are so many big data technologies but we do see a trend happening like where these technologies are moving and uh, which technology is getting which capability so we will basically be comparing very high level like uh, how Hadoop came into picture and then what is the role of Spark and what is the role of Kafka in this big data ecosystem. So primarily we will be focusing on these three areas. So what is happening here when we talk about big data technologies, definition is definitely changing of big data but at the same time please understand earlier we were having data warehouses and most of the companies were doing the data related work through data warehouses. So later on when Hadoop MapReduce came, so a lot of companies started to shift their data processing workloads into Hadoop MapReduce. Yeah. So we need to see the factor why companies started to move their workloads to Hadoop MapReduce. So one thing is it is open source. So it can run on commodity hardware and it is highly scalable so open source and uh, you can say it can run on commodity hardware so cost is very low and uh, it is fault tolerant so these are the factors which companies considered for choosing a particular technology yeah so it should be open source fault tolerant and then horizontally scalable and not just fault tolerant but fault tolerant on commodity hardware commodity hardware apart from that horizontal scalability is an important factor uh, companies also looking for things beyond sql like hadoop MapReduce with mahavad can offer machine learning so like uh, enterprises looking for those technologies beyond SQL because data warehouses were not able to do machine learning kind of things. So that's why this was a one of the shift which was happening like a lot of companies started to choose specifically Hadoop MapReduce. So this is Hadoop MapReduce. So next one is Hive. This Hadoop MapReduce was having this problem. It was not having any SQL interface and there is no optimization as such. So this was a miss SQL interface and optimization. So that's why we are moving away from data warehouses. But the problem is we don't have data warehouses on on big data technologies, which are open source, fault tolerant, horizontally scalable and supporting workloads beyond uh, uh, SQL. So we have to basically see some options. So Hadoop MapReduce offered open source fault tolerant on common horizontal scalability workloads beyond this and SQL and optimization was not there here. So this was not there. But in Hive, it is also open source. It is fault tolerant, horizontally scalable beyond SQL. Hive cannot do Hive has this uh, problem, but yes, it does provide SQL and optimization. So it was a wrapper which was created over MapReduce. So you don't have to write code in Java, but you can write code in SQL only like HQL Hive query language and under the hood, it will convert into MapReduce jobs. So Hive was offering all these things except it does not offer anything beyond SQL. So you have to be limited to the SQL ecosystem only. Then a uh, very interesting thing happened like uh, Kafka came into picture. So this was basically 2006 when uh, Yahoo Doc Cutting released MapReduce and this is 2007. And then another interesting thing happened which is Kafka and Kafka is evolving ecosystem. So it started in 2010 and it is like 1.0 was released around 2018 but there are so many things happening in kafka initially it started as a pub sub and later on evolved into an complete event streaming platform so if you see kafka kafka provides open source yeah it's open source it's fault tolerant on commodity hardware it provides horizontal scalability yes uh, it does provide horizontal scalability 
apart from that uh, the beyond uh, sql workloads when we are talking about machine learning support and other things so it is not there in kafka sql optimization this has little but there is another factor why kafka was being preferred later on in 2016 kafka released a support for streaming streaming ingestion and uh, connectors to connect external systems external systems so vast libraries of connectors to connect to external systems so this is basically like you want to connect to external system without doing any coding which was introduced in kafka in 2015 so this has this this has this but hive does not have streaming ingestion hadoop mapreduce does not have streaming ingestion and then uh, you will find that uh, when we talk about uh, connectors we don't have uh, connectors in mapreduce we don't have connectors in hive so these were the things which were missing in Uh, these technologies apart from that you will also see there is one another important requirement which is basically update functionality so when you up, want to update your data hadoop mapreduce did not provide that update functionality this is not supporting actually it is a processing technology it's not even a storage technology so this is not even applicable here so uh, hive supports updates on orc files optimized row columnar format on hdf so you can actually uh, update data kafka updates are not allowed but there is a process called compaction so through that you can achieve to some extent crud uh, so uh, can achieve by some like it's not so straight forward but it is possible on kafka now at the same time i want to mention about transactions transaction support and also i want to mention about uh, exactly one semantic exactly one semantic so transaction support hadoop mapreduce does not provide so if there any failure in the job in between then we don't have any way to revert or uh, roll back the things but uh, kafka does have transactional api hive does not have that so we have uh, exactly one semantic exactly one semantic means if there is any failure while we are processing a message then uh, the message will be retried then the same message may be processed twice if the same message is processed twice then what will happen this will impact a lot so exactly one semantic uh, basically says that we want to process the message once and only once even if there are failures in the system so mapreduce does not give you that hive does not give you that but kafka gives you that now we are basically not covering here spark so i want to add that part also so that it is very clear like which technology is supporting what so spark you spark started in 2009 but it evolved so wherever i am writing it evolution is there so you will find open source technology yes it is open source technology and uh, when you say this is fault tolerant yes it is fault tolerant horizontally scalable yes it is horizontally scalable beyond sql ml workload at spark has machine learning workload sql optimization yes streaming processing uh, so i am just writing here it's streaming processing so i am writing streaming processing so this is there streaming processing is there apart from that connectors to connect to external system it has connectors for data source api the newer version of spark it has that this data source api and then we have update functionality update functionality is there through delta lake delta lake uh, apart from that transactional support yes there delta lake exactly one semantic take is not there so these are few differences uh, among different technologies and how these technologies are evolving and even new new things are being added in different technologies please understand don't say that uh, kafka is better than the spark or spark is better than kafka all both these technologies have their own roles to play in ecosystem uh, kafka is having storage as well and uh, ingestion processing analysis like ksql but uh, spark is 
यूनिफाइड प्रोसेसिंग इंजन सो इट्स अ यूनिफाइड प्रोसेसिंग इंजन बट काफ का हैज अ डिफरेंट रोल इट कैन स्टोर डेटा ऑल्सो फॉर लॉन्ग टर्म सो आई कैन राइट ऑन वन मोर डिफरेंस हेयर स्टोरिंग डेटा फॉर लॉन्ग टर्म सो लेट मी राइट दैट स्टोर डेटा फॉर लॉन्ग टर्म दिस इज नॉट एप्लीकेबल हेयर दिस इज नॉट एप्लीकेबल हेयर काफ का येस वी कैन अचीव and spark it is not applicable so i wanted to distinguish like uh, kafka is different from spark a lot through this discussion so that you are very clear like uh, which technology to choose when and we will be discussing various technologies in, in the subsequent uh, sessions but for the time being just understand like uh, don't compare spark with kafka because if you are comparing kafka streams with spark streaming it makes sense if you are comparing case equal with structured streaming it makes sense but we should not compare kafka with spark as such because this is a comparison of apple and orange yeah so hope this gives you an idea like how the big data technologies are evolving and uh, what are the things being changed in the ecosystem so thank you so much i am looking forward uh, for the next sessions on uh, comparison of various technologies